Hello and welcome, I'm Foulplay Gaming, and this is a, another Acroma video. Today we are looking at starting a, a bit of a tier list series. Uh, so we're starting with the first realm in Acroma, which is called Curse of Curdle Hill. Uh, if you haven't seen one of these tier lists before, essentially we're going to be ranking every single card within this realm, which is a total of 60 cards, uh, from all the way from uh, S tier at the top, all the way down to uh, F tier. I'll explain the tiers in more detail and in a moment. Uh, but firstly, joining us in this video is uh, Carry, on my, Carry On My Way With None, who is my wife uh, and Spoopy Witch in the Acroman Discord. Hello, hello. Hello there. Uh, so yeah, it, it, considering these uh, tier lists are subjective, uh, it makes sense to have a couple of us uh, reviewing this at the same time. Um, and keep it in mind that this is subjective. So, you know, as we're going through this, you guys might have completely different opinions. Uh, and that is fine. Feel free to let us know in the comments if you think we've got something completely wrong. There will also be a link in the description if you want to have a go at this tier list yourself. Uh, so before we get started, a couple of things to mention. Uh, firstly, uh, in terms of the tiers, now this might end up changing as we go through it, but our kind of idea would be a card that's going to go into S tier is going to be a type of card that is like if you're deck building, actually, I should say that first, that the whole reason we're doing this is this is to help people with deck building. For those that maybe haven't played too many games or haven't really studied the cards properly, this is going to give you a good indication of which cards are really powerful, which cards maybe are, you know, okay, and which are completely useless. So that when you're doing a deck build for this realm, you'll be able to kind of pick the best cards. So with that in mind, the S tier, we're going to be going with cards that are... Uh, you know, pretty much invaluable. If you can put them in your deck, you'd be stupid not to. Uh, a tier cards are going to be cards that are really, really, really good. Uh, and also, critically, cards that not only are really good, but cards that don't have to rely on other cards. So you can just put this in your deck and it will help you out in whatever way. You don't have to worry about synergizing. B cards are going to be cards that are still good, but to make them, to get the best use out of them, you have to combine them with another card, which obviously then brings difficulty into things like card draw. <clears throat> uh, C tier is going to be essentially just your average card. This is kind of like the middle, um, you know, no, don't really love it, don't really hate it. It, it does a job and that's about it. Um, D tier is kind of the opposite of A tier. This is kind of like uh, cards that are relatively bad, but at least you can still get use out of them without combining them. And then F tier is essentially the opposite of uh, S tier. So it's, you know, cards that are really, really bad. And on top of that, that you only get any value if you synergize with another card. And even then, it's a bad thing you're getting out of it, which I, I don't think too many cards are. Like, I don't, you know, I hope that we don't actually put too many cards in F and D tier because that would make it sound like they've actually, uh, you know, not done the best no, detail. No, definitely. <clears throat> and I think it also comes down to, this is from our own personal knowledge of our own games that we've played. Um, and obviously Fowler's has played more uh, Curdle Hill games certainly than I have, um, and we've definitely found that some cards are incredibly situational, and even when you bring them out, sometimes it's a little bit too late. Absolutely. Uh, and then the last thing I'll say before we get into it is that um, when we're going to be comparing the cards, we're going to be mostly comparing them to other cards of their rarity. So when we start by looking at the legendaries, for example, if you hear us say, wow, that legendary is terrible, don't, you know, that's a D tier legendary. But then later on, we put a common card in the A tier. That's not necessarily saying that common card is is much better than that legendary. It's kind of like, even, even though it's one tier list, we're still kind of comparing individual cards to cards of the same sort of rarity. So keep that in mind. But anyway, let's get started because I don't want this to be too long a video. Uh, and we are going to be bringing the cards on screen for you to look at. So we're going to start with the legendaries. Um, so in no particular order, Kara Curdle. Um, so I guess we'll always, we'll, how about we take it in turns with reading out kind of the, the resolve, cost, uh, strength and abilities and then we'll discuss them. Oh, um, sure. So I'll start with Kara Curdle. So she is a plus one in the resolve. Uh, she has protection uh, from any Ac Akrom shards. Uh, and she also gives you plus one uh, and block one for each other card on your canvas. Uh, she's a six uh, six cost character with uh, obviously six uh, damage. Now, personally, I, I would say she is of the. I would actually put her in the B tier. Uh, on the my on the basis for that, I'm thinking that uh, the the fact she gets 
she's quite expensive, let's be honest. She she is um most legendaries cost six though. True. I mean certainly the what I would call the best ones or what I would name as most of the S tier ones are usually costing six shards. <clears throat> True, but you do get some that are four and five. And my, my reasoning is that um, she's only a plus one in the resolve. So if you don't have any other cards out, she's going to, you know, you're not going to get that value back very easily. Mm. Um, protection from Akrom is all well and good. But, you know, there are a lot of decks that you might play that don't have very much Akrom in, uh, which basically then makes that null and void. Um, and the plus one and block one for each other card in your canvas, that can be strong. But critically, that relies on you actually having loads of other characters out at the point that you play Kara, which that's why I'm thinking, I'm thinking B tier, but you might be able to convince me to A tier, but I'm thinking B tier on the sen sense of not in, yeah, it's good, but you have really still need to synergize with us. I mean, I will compromise with you and we'll go with A tier. Okay. We can always move. We can always move people around as we look at others. As yeah, well. yeah, absolutely. Um, and I say that mostly because um, quite often in games, I find if even if it's just a two-player game, one person is often playing uh, the Chroma side, and the other person is often playing the Akron side. You don't often see games in between, for example, than the Von Ruthrose uh, and the Magus Elite. Not to say that it doesn't happen, but um, in in my experience, anyway, you know, it's uh, unle unless you're doing uh, Chroma versus Akrom, then it's just Chroma versus Chroma. And yeah. then it's just a case of who can get to 31st. Yeah. And then that completely relies on card draw, essentially. Yeah. Fair enough. We'll, we'll put an A tier, but I, I might slip a back down one if we when we look at the other mm, legendaries if we shit. Um So moving next on to Cronus, you, you can read uh, her out in terms of her uh, stats. Oh, Chief Detective Cronus, I nearly said Chef Detective. Um, she does not give anything uh, in regards to the resolve phase up in the top right corner, uh, but she does give a plus three for each Magus, uh, Magus Elite character on your canvas, and of course she has a cost of six. Um, now, I would say that she is at least A tier. Um, plus three for each Magus yeah. Elite character on your canvas. She is a Magus Elite character, therefore you get plus three with her yeah. anyway. So, so that only takes two turns to, to get her cost back. Exactly. See, that's see that's why I'm thinking, like comparing her directly back to Kara, if we're saying that Cronus is A tier, then I want to move Kara down to, to B tier, or we put Cronus in S tier, because honestly, she... It, to me, she would be an, an S tier uh, legendary on the basis that. Oh yeah, um, I said a minimum. We can right, put her yeah, in yeah. S tier. Yeah. Just because she, in my, she's one of the strongest legendaries uh, for this uh, realm anyway. Just in the sense of yeah, plus three. Just even by getting her out means yeah, two turns and you've got her payback. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she's a six strength character, which is great for just generally beating other legendaries like Isadora. Mm -hmm. And yeah, let's be honest, the chances of you getting another character out, even 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 if in one turn you play her and then like two other characters that cost one or two you, you will get nine. yeah exactly yeah. like even if you uh, she gets wiped out on the next turn you've made your money back so yeah okay mm. let's let's put her then in the s tier i'm happy with that all right so uh next then we have got uh isadora Ooh. so she is a steel two in the resolve she again costs six uh, and she is an extra steel one for another character on your canvas um, so I guess I'm leaning towards A tier for her because she's, she's kind of, I guess you could argue similar to Kara where she's I mean, kind of, sisters. I mean, they are sisters, I guess they would be quite <laughs> similar. Um, in the sense that, you know, when you look at their overall net gain, you know, Kara is, uh, plus one and then, you know, for each other card, plus one and a block. Whereas Isadora is only, pl only plus, uh, you know, only an extra steel one for each character, but she starts with steel too. So I, I would be surprised if we put her anywhere else other than a tier personally it just makes sense um yeah yeah i'll go with a tier i, yeah. I agree with you um because you know so far with the three you gotta remember with the three legendaries we've seen we haven't seen any uh control mm. um you know at the moment these three have just been like ways of gaining more shards or stealing or etc um again we can always uh, reevaluate so next is going to be uh hex clunker Reminds me a little bit of Howl's Moving Castle. It does, doesn't it? It is a beautiful plus... artwork. Exactly. Uh, it is a plus two in the resolve, and this is actually a location. It's not a character. 
Um, and uh, the description says, once during your turn, find or dig for an object of power and immediately deploy it for free. So that means that you can either go through your pallet, which is your draw pile, or you can go through your discard pile or your dregs in order to find that object of power and then immediately deploy that for free, which is so not bad. It's not bad, but honestly, I, I, my initial impressions of cl uh, Hex Clunker is I'm going to go down. I would put him down and beat it. I say him. I don't know why I'm thinking. I don't know why I'm fucking genderizing <laughs> a, a robot. Yeah, what the fuck. Um, but uh, yeah, I would put him in B tier. The reason why is, you know, I, I don't think there's any legendaries that I'm aware of that are like, you know, that are meh. Like yeah. he, he's, you know, he's still a plus two location. That's great. Um, I can't believe you're calling a location he. <laughs> being being able to, you know, once per turn take an object, which you know you you can. I mean, to be fair, actually. Saying that, I, I mean, I guess if you have built it, yeah, we think of, you know, some of the objects that we've got. You've got Cronus Staff, which is a three cost. You might have Delilah's Cauldron, which is another three cost. Almost every deck has got a fairly good object um, of power. I guess you've got um, lots of to, like, traps. Up to, like, uncommon or rare. Yeah. But, so, yeah, obviously, you know, the reason why I want, why I want to put him in B tier, remember what I wanted for B tier is mm. that's a good card but it relies on other cards to be good. Yeah. If you if you you have you are forced to build a deck that has loads of objects and even then you have to then get characters out and hex clunker out mm. to be able to then get those objects. Um and you know, he's a six he's a six cost card. It's going to take 3 turns to get that value back. And although you could argue that okay by deploying an object, you know, you've saved shards. I don't know. I just think very cool, very situational, great mm. for certain decks, but you know, A tier by himself, good. No, Do you agree? I would say B or uh, no, I wouldn't quite go down to C. No, I think I think I, he's got value I think, in him. Yeah, because uh, there's, there's still the the plus two. Yeah. Uh, in the resolve phase, anyway. I honestly don't think we're gonna go any uh, lo you know uh, low for any of these legendaries. No. Um. So next is Otrix. <gasps> My baby. This is you. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a steel, steel one, um, uh, five cost. But the action claim a character from another canvas. So this one's an, uh, an awkward one because you know so far with all of the other four legendaries in comparison, they've all had really strong, you know, way uh, gain in the resolve. But where Otrix is different is she's only a steel one, but she costs one less. But that that action though is you know that could be game changing. If you are tactical and you wait to play Otrix after your opponent has played, you know, their Cara Detective Kirtle, Huxen, for example. Detective Huxen, for example. M's. Sorry about that, M's. <laughs> uh, you know, or, or, you know, their legendary. You know, if you're tactical with Otrix, she can literally be game-changing. So yeah. I am I want to put her in A as well. I think, I, you know. I, I agree. And also because she looks great. She does look I great. I mean, look at her. She does look, look great. Look at that balance. Incredible. <laughs> Uh, all right, then that brings us to our last legendary, which is uh, Klaus von Rothro. Klaus von Rothro. He's very cool. He I is. like him. Um, so he has a plus three in the resolve. He only costs four shards, um, but he gives you a plus two for each other character on your canvas. So he's pretty ideal for any character heavy deck that you would want to be playing. Um, yeah, and you see, it's it's hard. I'm really tempted, to, for my initial impression, to put him in the S tier. Because again, when you compare him to the other person we put in there, Cronus, yeah, I was thinking you know, that. she's a plus three for every character, which technically includes herself. For each Magus Elite character. Yeah, for each Magus Elite character, exactly. Um, and six costs. He costs two less, mm. gives an extra one as he gives, yeah, sorry, he also gives three for himself. Yeah. Uh, and only two for each character, but as you kind of made a point of there, it's every character, yeah. not just detectives. I mean, you could even role player or lore it if you wanted to and get him into uh the occultists for example where yeah. um some of the some of their builds are um you know uh, getting as many characters out as you possibly can imagine yeah. having klaus in there as well yeah. um so are we, are we happy vesta yes yeah I, I think so okay well there we go there is the the legendaries at this point feel free to leave a comment if you feel like we've completely given the hex clunk of the wrong side of the uh <laughs> the, the board um, so let's move on to the rares. So um, in no particular order for these, these these now aren't in order down here. I'm just going to literally mm. choose on my on my list. So let's start with uh, Arabella von Rothro. Um, Klaus's wife. Yeah. Uh, so who read out the last one? I think it's... I did. Okay, so Arabella is a steel one. Uh, she costs four, which is the same as uh, her husband. Um, and the action is you may deploy an additional card on this turn or one other player 
may uh, deploy no more than two cards during their next turn. <sighs> now... That can be game-changing. Yeah, I guess it, it, it's quite situational. Mm. Um, you know, being able to play an extra card in your turn can be really powerful, especially if you're about to drop, Cro uh, you know, uh, Cronus or Ruthro, mm. you know, so you can get an extra character out for those extra points. But critically, having being able to play an extra card relies on something major, having the shards in the first place. Yeah. So unless you're already near end game anyway, if you're already spending four shards for Arabella and you're already spending, you know, let's say an average of two extra shards each on two other cards. So let's say you've now spent eight shards. What are the chances that you have more shards to spend on a fourth card? So I don't know. I don't think that, I mean, I've only really played her a couple of times, but I don't, mm. I, I mean, the, both the times I've played her, I've actually used the second part of her ability, which is yeah. uh, to take uh, stopping someone else. But then again, most, you know, especially early to mid game, most, players don't have that many shards mm. so telling them oh you can't play a third card is like it's fine i couldn't afford to play it i didn't even, <laughs> yeah. i didn't even have a third card in my hand yeah. <laughs> like um i don't know i personally want to put her in the c tier uh i i think that she's kind of she's not terrible you know there's situations where she'll be powerful mm. but i don't think she's i wouldn't even put her in b tier personally what about you um it's the resolve uh thing that really gets me that that makes me the, the fact that she's only a steel one yeah if she was uh, a steel two perhaps um or even just a gain two mm -hmm. then you know i would probably put her in b tier it does make sense for her to be stealing since you know there's there's the passage of you being able to say to another player sorry you can't deploy a third card this round um but no, I I would agree with the C tier as well. Okay. She's she definitely has her place. Um, know your place. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that that would require potentially some building around it. Cool. All right, we'll go to C then. Uh, so the next one I've got on my list in front of me is uh, yeah, Kara's Chroma Cure. Woo! Um, so Kara's Chroma Cure is a it's a rare, but it costs six shards. Now this is an action that gives you plus one for each character on your canvas. And you get to erase all characters with the black colored shard that includes characters on your canvas. And characters with any uh, chroma colored gets protection from the black shards until your next turn. Now, damn, I would put that up in S personally. Really? Yeah. So I don't know, I'm, I was thinking B. Really? Because, again, don't get me wrong, like reading all of that sounds really, really powerful, but it's just an action, so it's just a once off. Um, so, you know, I, I'm looking at all, looking at all these uh, things individually. Plus one for each character on your canvas. That's mm. all well and good, but unless you realistically have four or more characters on your board at that point in time, I mean, let's be honest, unless you had more than six characters, you're actually not getting any bonus. You're not like gaining anything right now. You're just kind of like reducing how much you've spent on the cure. Um, let's be honest, how many times do you often have six characters out? Not that regularly, I don't know. So yeah, again, the gain isn't actually crazy good. Erase all characters with uh, Akrom. Well, obviously, firstly, again, that relies on you going against uh, an Akrom deck, which, you know, doesn't always happen. Or, you know, you might be playing a, a multiplayer game where that only really affects one person, and they might not have any characters out at that point in time. That also raises your own characters. So if you've built this card into a kind of a blended deck, it might erase your own. And then, you know, characters with any, um, et cetera, ex uh, you know, Chroma get protection from Black till your next turn. That's only for, and only till your next turn, it's not permanently. But then if you're also in a multiplayer game anyway, then... Yeah. And unless... You, un know, you un can't get attacked at any point until your next turn from uh, Akron. Mm. I, I think it's, again, really, I, it, can, it can be powerful. So I, I would put it maybe in the, I, that's why I want to go B, because I, I think it's really powerful but it's very situational based on other cards that are on your deck, other cards that are on their deck. Uh, I'll compromise and go A tier if you want, but I'm on. I'm really on the fence. All right, fine, we'll go B. You sure? Fine, okay, yes. Okay. That, you're, you're, giving, you're giving me one there. There'll be a time where I'll concede to you at some point. Yeah, you better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so next on the list I've got here is Cronus Staff, uh, which is actually over here. Um, so uh, Cronus Staff is a plus one uh, object of power, costs three, and I think this is so strong. While Cronus Staff is attached, all Magister Elite characters on your canvas have a plus one. Have a block one. Uh, sorry, a block one. Uh, I think that's so powerful. Um, obviously, 
again, it does sort of rely on things like first, you know, you have to actually have a character out. Uh, you know, it does rely on you having a Magus Elite characters to get the extra block. And if you're playing against a deck that isn't, you know, gaining or minusing, then mm. block is literally useless. Um, so again, I'm leaning towards uh, B tier of yeah. very good. But I, th I think I think B tier. Too much. It. I mean, you know, going back to our game, for example, um, that we played with M's. Um, she attacked Cronus' staff to a, a Hex Clunker Engineer who already had a block. Um, and obviously she was playing just for Magus Elite, um, like the, the starter deck. So she was pretty damn powerful um, yeah. when she had that out. And actually we had to really try and plan out how we were going to get rid of all of her stuff so that we could actually steal yeah. things from her. So I mean, sure, very powerful card, but just it has to be, you have to rely on other things happening, like having yeah. good characters out. All right, cool. Uh, so next then uh, is Delilah's Cauldron. Woo! Like my D&D character. Yeah. So this is a cost three rare card. And during your turn, you may draw a card. If you draw an action, place it under Delilah's Cauldron, that being an object of power, by the way, didn't say that, and play it for free at any time. If the card isn't an action, place it at the bottom of your palette. It's a tough one because there is so much that you can gain from that, but there's also so much that you can lose. Imagine, risk, pulling, imagine pulling a legendary. I think... God, I, I'd be so pissed. Yeah, I kind of want to put it in C tier, B tier at a push, for the same sort of reason as Hex Clunker, that, you know, if you build, if you make a build around Delilah's Cauldron, where you put in, you know, as many objects of power, uh, sorry, as many actions as possible, um, so that you're more likely to draw actions, then uh, that's great. And, and, you know, you've got to remember as well that Delilah's Cauldron could be super powerful, but in this realm, you have so many claim and restrain cards. Yeah, you, do. you you just need your opponent to either claim the character that has Delilah's Cauldron or restrain it. Jarvis or, Tremor or can, can just straight up nick it from you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jarvis, like, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll come to Jarvis in a bit. He's only an uncommon card. So I think with that, I want to put it in. You know what? I might even put it in. I might even go D, actually, the more we think I about don't, it. I don't think D. No? Think C? I think, I think C because. It's also, even if you took away its uh, its abilities and everything, it still has a shard value of three as an object of power, which I think that if you put it on the right character, or yeah, any character, really... Yeah, it's, not, it's really, not too costly. It actually... Yeah, I, I think that that could save right. particular characters. So I, I think C. Sure, I'm happy with that. Yes. Um. So next thing, you just didn't want to... You just, <laughs> just like that card too much. You didn't want it to, didn't want it to fail. It's um, witchy. All right, I think we. I think this one's quite a short one, really. Detective Huxton, <laughs> who's reading this one out? It's me, isn't it? It's, you. it's a plus. He's a plus two. He should be a legendary. Let's be honest. Hot guy. He, he's, a, he's a plus two. He's actually quite hot, isn't he? Yeah. Plus two. Only costs three, and you get plus one for each other character and location on your campus. I, I'm sorry, but just just everybody have a look at Detective Huxton just just for a moment. We'll, we'll, where did he go? Admire uh, his muscles. Admire his muscles, <laughs> and then compare him to Rothro, which we believe to be. So plus two, one for each other character. Plus three, two for every character. So it's slightly less. But when you consider that it's also every other location as well, and he costs one less to play, it's just... Yeah, he, he, he in my opinion, is S tier. I mean, it it's, has to be it's at a point where you've got to think, are you going for the silver fox? Or are you going for the daddy material? <laughs> and uh, Detective Huxton, I believe, is S tier. Yeah, for both looks and uh, ability and game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he only costs three. Yeah. And you get. And you can have two of them, but and... not out at the same time. No, but As... like it costs three. You get a plus two in the resolve, and then you get a plus one every single resolve for each other character and location on your canvas. You're more often than not going to have at least one other card out yeah. on your canvas at a time. So already in one turn, you've made it up. Exactly. And I'm sorry, I just made a mistake. You, you, there's no situation where we'd have two of him on the board. Not like, only, you know, he's a rare. Yeah, because you already have one, one of them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, so yeah, absolutely yes, it. All right. So next is Detective uh, Vraxia. This is me. Um, you know, not literally. Uh, so Detective Vraxia has a plus two in the resolve. Uh, she's a rare that costs four shards. Um, and once per turn, when another one of your characters is erased, return them to your hand. Now I feel like this is a character, again, it's a Magus Elite, so obviously really gels well with uh, Cronus and uh, and Huxon, um, and even Von Rothbard, to be honest. Um, the fact that when one of your characters is erased, any of them, 
can just go straight back to your hand. Let's say you had a rabid dog that bit Cronus, and <laughs> Cronus and you know rabid dog is poisonous, so immediately Cronus ends up getting erased anyway. Yeah. Imagine having Varaxia out, and you're just able to bring a like straight back in. Yeah. I, I mean, oh, wait, well, straight back in, in terms of your next turn. I would say. A yeah, tier. I was thinking between A and S, um, because you know when you yeah, I guess A tier, um, A tier work. Ah, I don't know. I'm really tempted to put her in S I... because I'm just thinking that like you know look at look at all of the cards that we've played used so far. Uh, appreciate you know minus actions and locations. You pair her with any of your legendaries or any of the rares we've looked at so far. Uh, technically, because you could you know give the cauldron. Oh, actually, no. That's a good point, actually, because, um, I mean, yeah, you could give the card to her. But what I'm trying to make a point of is mm. she just makes your entire deck better. Because if you have her out, then your enemy has to focus Vraxia before anyone else or risking of you just getting your legendary. Imagine, cause True. imagine getting your Chondra Otrix back and being able to then replay the action of yeah. um, uh, being able to claim another character. Well, but I'm, I'm thinking of the fact of, uh, you know, again, I'm putting it into the context of the game that we played with Ems. Uh, where I used, I think I used Block Out the Sun yeah. um, to remove all characters and locations with yellow. Um, and she had only mm. just put Vraxia out, and she has yellow, and she was the only character who got erased, and she can only return other characters to your hand. Um, so, yeah. you know, if she could, uh, sort of like the, the Jade Pendant in um, Siege of Draco Temple, yeah. if she could return herself to your hand, that would be S tier. You know what? That's a fair I comment. I think that she's A tier. Fact she, fact she, she can't return herself. Yeah, we'll put yeah. her in A. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, next one then is Magus Elite Investigation. Uh, so this is a heroic action. Uh, you uh, cost five. Uh, you get to claim a location, uh, restrain a character. Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, so you claim a location from another person's canvas, and then you get to also restrain a character from any canvas under that location. Um... So this is obviously very, very powerful mm -hmm. because not only are you deny uh, you're taking a location, you know, and if you think of some of the powerful locations in this game, like for example Hex Clunker, mm -hmm. or like for example Wrangled mm -hmm. Wood, which will come or on to a bit. City Gate, that's or Blood of City Gate. Three. Yeah, we'll talk about all these in a bit. Um, you know, that could be massive, uh, a massive takeaway from your opponent and gain for you. And being able to then restrain one of their characters as well is very good. Obviously, the cost is quite high. Um, but also, I mean, that gives it good trade value. Let's not forget, mm. for all of these cards, I've had a high cost value. Gives you also a good way to trade. I would probably put it in eight, uh, eight tier, to be honest. Uh, or maybe I guess I'd you... put it in S personally. You think S? You think S? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. You know, because, it's good control. Yeah, I think it's very, very good control, and pretty much every deck um, out there as well. You know, in in terms of deck building um, or in the starter decks, you know, there's going to be at least one location in every deck that will help them a lot with either an action or in yeah, the result true. phase with the stealing or the gaining or the draining or something like that. So I okay. think that in pretty much every single game that you play, yep. that card will come in handy. Sure. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm happy with that. Uh, so next one then is Murky Manor. <gasps> I want to live here. So this is a heroic location. It costs six. Um, in the resolve phase, it gives you minus two, as in you can drain two from somebody else. Um, and the thing that comes with it is you can find a card with black shards and immediately deploy it for free. So that's going through your draw pile or your palette. Um, and yeah, you can just take that out and immediately deploy that for free. Charlie, can you remind me whether that counts towards the deployment? Yeah, so I had this. I had this confirmed. Yeah, confirm I that, know that this was. Uh, that the answer out. is no. So any any uh, my mistake for anyone that's watched my streams and videos in the past, because this is something that I got wrong. Uh, and thankfully, you know, I don't mind being corrected. Um, but yeah, any any card in the entirety of this uh, Chroma game uh, that is allows you to, you know, if if it's a you're deploying a card because of another card, that card is completely free of, of the three cards in your hand deployment phase rule so yes it yeah there's no time where you could play this and you wouldn't oh, be able to get to son of a bitch yeah um <laughs> so personally i i think that uh murky manor i'm instantly thinking uh a i'm thinking a tier the reason why i'm not putting it in s is because 
it, you know, six cost, minus two location is fantastic, and being able to basically find a, 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 an Akron, Akron card mm. is amazing because, you know, if you go for your, you know, literally one of your legendaries, you've basically got a free card there and got it out when you want it. The only reason I'm not thinking S tier is because keep in mind that we're talking about, you know, this is someone building a deck where they might completely mix and match. Mm. This card only works if you're playing it with a legendary or you know lots of high cost decent cards that have Akron in you know so for the for the reason of it wouldn't be it wouldn't be s tier in any deck you build you know think thinking of the other characters we put out so far all of the other uh, people and actions we've put in s tier so far no matter what deck you build they are going to give you um massive value i mean you could mm. technically argue Cronus wouldn't unless you put magnus elite but we'll, we'll, we'll leave her there still so with that in mind i want to put a tier personally I I think I agree with you on the A tier, but I do want to put out there that, um, you know, building around Murky Manor, or just building a deck with Murky Manor in there, um, I feel like you really only need, you know, a minimum of one card that has Akron. If it was just the one card, I would expect it to be a legendary or another rare. Um, but honestly, if you just had two uncommon actions that had Akron in your deck that would make Murky okay. Manor more than worth it. But I'll throw another thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not changing the chair. I'm happy with it, but just to kind of throw a spanner in the works for that point as well. How dare you. Keep in mind that you have to find it. So, uh, you know, if you get Murky Manor in your hand nice and early and mm. you can play it nice and early, then blooming fantastic. But if you don't get Murky Manor till mid to late of your deck, and by that point, you've already played those said Akron cards. You know, um, you know, you've already you've already had your other Akron cards in your hand or on your deck or in your dregs. That now becomes almost useless because the card you either have no card to find or a little. It's true. Dog. It's true. Or you might have both of the cards to be able to find because Murky Manor came out for you soon. Almost every yeah. single time that I have played with, Mer I've played a deck that has Murky Manor in it. Murky Manor has been in my starting hand. And that's, that's just pure luck. That's just, <laughs> I know, that's just pure I luck. know it's just pure luck, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, every single time, it's been in my hand. Okay. So just because I just because I really don't want this video to go... I mean, I wasn't. I didn't want to go over half an hour, and we're barely halfway through. Um, we'll, we'll, probably, we'll probably talk, like, in detail about the rest of the rares, and then the rest will go through nice and quickly and hopefully keep yeah. this video under an hour. Um, but yeah, so either way, we agree that it's eight tier. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, cool. Um, so the next one, then, is... Uh, uh, oh, 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 ah! Occultist Den. I can never say the word first try. I, I, my, my, my brain goes different words. Um, so this one is a Steel 2. Uh, it is another heroic location. Five cost. During your turn, you may dig for a uh, Occultist character. Um, again, I'm going down the same uh, thing as Murky Manor here for myself. That I feel like it should be A tier. Uh, again, Steel 2 is fantastic. Just like Murky Manor is minus 2. One, cost 1 less than Murky Manor. Lovely. And it's kind of like like the fact it's once per turn you can dig. Actually, no, no, I want. I, I, I think it. it needs. I wow. Okay, I think it needs to be B. Well, I'm just thinking that because um, it's for an occultist character. Yeah, I guess it is for occultist. But so where I've seen this be so powerful, and again, I guess I'm going against my very own point here of saying you know it has to work with other cards. Is I've seen so many games where people have had occultist den out, and especially when you do uh, Akron builds, you struggle for shards. So what you do is if you have a cultist den out, uh, cards like a cultist uh, shaman, which will come onto the bit, which is a three cost character. Oh yeah, I've you, literally done that. Yeah, you do it where you trade her, and then once per turn you get to dig her. You dig her back, and then you trade her again at the end. So like you can you mm. can double trade in a turn. Or you like I did, you attack somebody with it, get yes. rid of their other yeah, get rid of three card, card and then just bring and back then, anyway. Yeah. So there's so. Like, you know, even though it, it costs five, you you know, in three turns, it will have paid for itself. And in on top of that, every single time you're digging for a character, you're just getting so much value. But I, I still feel like it should be beta because it relies on you having an occultist character. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I, 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 I did say I would. Um, <laughs> I did say that I would. Uh, I would uh, let you ha let you have one. It's you a good card, one. by no doubt. But you know, it's a little bit like yeah. with the Magus Elite. You either have Magus Elite, or you know, no, true. you've got the Ludlum City Guard, who's actually true. a wizard. You know. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about. It. I think that I think that one might split the room. Um, so next one, selective, selective diminish. diminish, a heroic action that costs you five Akron shards. You can erase up to one character 
one location, and one object of power with any of the chroma shards, so any of the coloured ones. Um, now this is one that, to be honest, I've never actually used myself. I have only ever been able to trade it. Um, because yeah. every time I want to be able to use it, I'm not in a position to. Um, uh, but, you know, five shards, not bad. Yeah, and personally, although, you know, that's a lot of control right there, you know, one character mm. could be a legendary. Yeah. One location could be a legendary. One object of power could be a rare. However, the like, you know, what's the likelihood that the character, location, and object that you're getting rid of costs a total of five or six shards? I, I just think that... I think it'd be better in a big multiplayer game. Yeah, you got more yeah, obviously, to choose from. exactly. Yeah, there's, yeah, you know what? That's a really good point. That you know, it doesn't say that it has to be from from the same canvas. So you could erase a character from one location from the other object from another. You could even erase one of your own characters or locations because I think there are some characters that say uh, when this is erased, blank, blank, blank happens. Or I'm something. not sure if there is oh, in this actually, realm. Yeah, I, I don't think, think there I is. I think it's only in Siege Trick Temple actually. Yeah, um, but either way, I, I personally, I think, I think Sita. I yep. think that because it's, um, you know, it's costs a lot. Mm. Yeah, situation would be great, but it relies on, it's, it'd be better in multiplayer games. Yeah, I'm just not a big fan. Yeah. Um, next one then is Sorcerer Pifarius. 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 Um, so this one's me, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so as in like, as in me to yeah. read out. Uh, so it only costs three, which is quite a cheap for some of the rares we've seen. Uh, uh, and you gain, sorry, you steal one for each occultist character on your canvas. Uh, personally, I think that's B tier. You know that that you know, uh, considering that ste uh, you know, especially in Akron decks, mm. uh, ste you know, gaining shards through steel is so important. Plus, it happens every turn. Every single turn. Uh, you know, he, he, being a three uh, health, you know, you're gonna need some, some quite good cards to get rid of him. Yeah. And you do have quite a lot of cheap. Um, you do have quite a lot of cheap occultist characters you can get out, like Prism Sapper and Warlock that we'll talk about in a bit. Mm. Um, that I think if you pair them up you know again b tier good if you pair them up with other things yeah you agree all right yep, we've got we've gone so. b tier for them mm -hmm. uh, and that brings us on to our last rare which is von rothro house Woo! beautiful location very pretty house i would live there again house moving castle vibes um so this is a cost five uh card it has a plus two in the resolve and it comes with during your turn you may dig for a character with any chroma shards and create and sorry and trade them um wow i mean basically it's just this well not quite free shards but you know you can go through your discard pile with any chroma shards in there and then trade them back for the shards so it's almost like you had them out and they're dead anyway like it's yeah. not like you unless you have um unless you have like hex clunker or revival but, but actually yeah, hex clunker is pointless anyway because yeah. that, that's from yes yeah, so unless you had a revival which we're talking about in a bit um you know chances are or, or unless you're running something like a cultist den um but then again that wouldn't be for chroma anyway mm. yeah i i yeah that's really good because you know basically it makes every character that's dead think of it this way every character again provided you're running a, a chroma based shard deck mm. uh, every character that you uh lose you can dig for it, trade it, and get the shards back. It's and almost this, like, ha yeah. And it happens every turn. You know what? I've never, I'll be honest, I've never actually had Von Ruffer House come up in a hand that I've played. I don't think I've actually ever, in all my games of Curdle, I don't think I've seen it played once. So maybe this opinion is too based on I died could be too quickly to get it out. Yeah, <laughs> it, this, may be, this may be an opinion is on what could be rather than what often happens. Mm. I kind of want to put that... And the more I think about it, the more I want to put that in S tier. The fact that you, if you can keep that out, not only getting plus yeah. two per turn, only cost five, but you are literally every single character that dies, you you can get their shards back, meaning that you've essentially not trade, you've not lost shards. And that trade them, that's because it's part of the action. That's not costing your trade. So you could th theoretically trade three times per turn of that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that has to be S tier. Yeah. Yeah. The more I think about, the more I think about, it, the more <laughs> S tier is. Um, okay. So that ends the rares. So what we'll do is, considering that's already been a 40 minute video, we're going to go through the Ooh. uncommons and rares. We'll, we'll do it literally, we'll, we'll read we'll it out quickly. We'll do a smash and pass kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> we'll read it out really quickly and then just call out which tier you think it is, have a really quick agreement and go. Mm. We won't talk too much about synergies and stuff because this isn't supposed to be like a deck review where we talk about every card in detail. Yeah. Um, so let's go into the uncommons. Um, we'll start with action. So uh, Akron Surge, raise all locations for three. Uh, personally, I think that is an A tier. I agree. Um, yeah, it yeah. just has to be. It's it it does it does a job by itself. 
The only reason it's not S tier is it doesn't raise your own locations, which yeah. means that there's times you can't use it. There's got to be a sacrifice in there. Yep. Actually, we'll take it into his reading, and also the person reading it out also gives the first opinion. Oh, shit, okay. Um, so, Drain the Woods next. <laughs> drain the Woods. Oh, I like this one. Uh, it is a four cost. Uh, drain two shards from all locations and characters, plus one for each card erased this way. Um, oh man, I would put this at an A tier. See, I was, I was thinking B, only because again, it does drain your own one uh, characters. And two, oh, I think it's I think it's only really super powerful in m more than th like three plus player games where you've got then loads of characters in canvas. It worked in our game with M's. Because um, there was a three player. Yes, yeah. So I, for that I, reason, I, I think yeah, I'll, I'll concede. Thank you, yeah. I, yeah, because again, Great, but needs other steps. Yeah. Uh, next then is Fireball. I cast Fireball. I I personally think that that's uh, an A tier. Um, you know, having control in your deck is arguably one of the most powerful things in this game is just having ways to erase things from your opponent. Two, uh, only two shards. Two cards and you get to choose it. Cause you know, it's not like, oh, they have to choose. You get to erase a character or location. Yeah, I, yeah. I personally think that's a... Uh, Eight. You know what? I might even go in S tier for an. I, I mean, I, it only costs two, so yeah. honestly, I'd put it S. Yep, yeah, I think S tier. I think that's uh, you know, you need to put that in your deck. Yeah. Um, occultist influence. Uh, so you get to steal one for each character on your canvas, and this costs you three. Um, this one is one that I haven't really been able to use too much. I would probably put it at B. See, I'm thinking genuinely C or D, and the reason why... I was being generous with B, to be honest. <laughs> the, reason, the reason why is um, it costs three, uh, so you have to really, you want to have a minimum of three characters out to yeah. even make use of it. And although you could argue that it's, it's less about you regaining your shards back, it's more about, you know, potentially killing somebody else. You know, that could be the killing blow, maybe. Yeah. You know what, the fact it could be a killing blow, you know, three extra steel before you resolve phase, mm. I think C tier. I don't think it's a bad card. But, yeah, um... I'll, I'll agree with C. All right, cool. Uh, next one then is uh, Revival. Uh, Hell which, yeah. Which uh, really pretty card. It lets you to dig for a character. Uh, so it costs three. Um, personally, I also think uh, C card, uh, C, because there are there are better cards in this realm to be able to dig for characters. Um, and costing three to dig means that... Uh, you know, you're spending three to get that character back and then having to spend, you know, however much that character was to get them back out. You know, mm -hmm. for, for most characters that are, you know, normally about three cost, you're practically doubling the cost of that card. How important is that character to you? Now, you could argue that for Detective Hoxton, amazing, yeah. but I want, I want to put it in, in C tier personally. What do you think? You think I'm being too harsh? Um... B tier maybe? No, to be honest, I I want to believe that it could be B, but honestly, it, in my experience of playing Revival, I actually haven't really had the chance to play it yet. It's been okay. a case of I've had to trade it for shards. Sure. Okay, so we'll put it in C then. So now we move on to the uncommon characters. So we start with Delilah Crockett. Delilah! Uh, this is your one, actually. It is, yeah. So she costs three. Uh, give another character protection from Akron shards. Um, I would put her in B. Oh, maybe C. Yeah, I'm I think C. C. She's only three shards, so she doesn't cost that much to put out, but also that means she doesn't have a lot of health. And she only gives protection to one, one other, other character. character. And that's yes. only from Akron, which again, going back to my point that I keep bringing up. Yeah. If you're not against an Akron uh, player or your multiplayer game, yeah. pretty much useless. And she doesn't have any resolve. Yeah, no resolve. She doesn't no resolve. give you anything exactly. or steal anything. Which, so. okay, you're supposed, you know, I guess you're supposed to put her with, you know, Detective Huxton, but even still. Um, yeah, I agree, C tier. Uh, next then is uh, Green Raven. So once per, oh, across yeah, three, one. Once per turn, uh, sorry, once during each player's turn, you may look at the top card of that player's palette. Now, if this was once per, you know, once per round rather than once per player's turn, then I would say it's terrible. I would put it in D tier. Mm. The fact that one, you know, I'm going to put it in, I would think B tier. And here's why. In single player games, or like, you know, do player games, actually, no, no, no. I, I'm, the more I think about it, I change my mind. I think that's A tier. It doesn't rely on any of the cards. And if you have this out, not only is it a character which, you know, means you can put, uh, you know, items on or with Detective Huxton mm. gives you more things. But the fact that until they get rid of it, you can once per turn look at their top card. You know, after a few turns, you're going to know what's in their hand for everybody. Yeah. And knowing is half the battle. If you know, oh, they've got a uh, fireball, 
oh, I'm not gonna play my legendary until they use that fireball for something else. Plus, you know that that card is coming and that player doesn't. It was difficult for us when we were playing yeah, yeah. Um, with, uh, I think it was David, um, on Discord. I wanna say it uh, Because, you know, it was very difficult to show cards without seeing it yourself through the cams. Yeah. Um, but yeah, A tier. Cool. Uh, next one then is uh, Hex Clunker Engineer. Hex Clunker Engineer. He blocks one. He costs three shards. And when you put him out, he has an action of dig any player's dregs for an object of power. That's any player. Um, honestly, I would put that. Ooh, uh, B tier, I think. The block is helpful. Um, I want to say C. And it, the reason why, uh, the reason why the, the difference to being B and C tier for me personally is if it was dig any player's dregs for an object of power and play it immediately for free, uh, B tier. But the fact you've then also got to spend shards and another card your turn to play it. When you actually look at this realm, there aren't actually that many amazing objects of power. You've got a f couple of uh, rares, like Chrono Staff, that's great. Delilah's Cauldron, well, we put that in C tier anyway. But... And you've got a couple of cheap ones like Nuon Trap, which is good for restraining. But you've then, you've then, sorry, got, you've got to rely on those cards being in someone's dredge and you being able to play at the same, uh, well, I guess you haven't got to play at the same turn. And again, because he's only a block, you've just spe spent three to, again, not potentially get any more resolve. But you're also stopping somebody else from getting that. For example, if that person's got Hex Clunker. Yeah, get, well, very situational they can, though. They can get that object of power. Yeah. You know? I I will I will come down to C cool. for you, but cool. I still think that he has potential. Yep, that's fair. Uh, so next then on my list here is... Uh, Plus is, hot. <laughs> is uh, Jarvis Tremor. You little shit! Yeah. Steals people's stuff. I'm gonna suggest, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll lean towards you uh, here, but I would put him somewhere in the B to C tier. Uh, the, the action being able to claim an object and attach it to him, actually no, B tier, for the same reason that I put Engineer in C tier. Because at least with Jarvis, you are spending three to claim an object that's in play now, and you get to attach it to him now for no extra cost. So for True. that makes him B over Hexplunk Engineer. True, he doesn't have anything in the resolve phase, however. You'd but have to kind of hope that the object of power would give you which, something to in be the resolve. Fair, I don't think there's Some a single... Some of them do. I think the only object of power that doesn't give you something Delilah's is... Delilah's Cauldron. Uh, Delilah's Cauldron and Neon Trap. So I, yeah, I mean, are you happy with B tier? I think when you compare him directly yeah, to the card we fine. just looked at, when you compare <laughs> him to Engineer, it makes sense. Yeah, all right. Uh, next one then is Magus Elite Enforcer. He's kind of cool. Um, so he gets a plus one in the resolve. He costs three shards. Increase this Magus Elite enforces shard value by red when they attack. Um, I think I think eight. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. 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 Cost three. <laughs> you know, it cost, cost three. Gives you a plus one, which is always always great. Um, but the fact that when he attacks, you can plus four. You know, think of how many. Uh, a lot of kind of you know how many common and uncommon characters are there that have four shards. In fact, I would argue there is actually no... Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the board now. I don't think there's a single character that isn't rare or legendary that has four shards, which means that he, if you have him on the board, you can effectively attack and kill any non-rare character on the board, mm. provided there's no objects and provided that, um, you know, you attack before you are attacked. Yeah. So yeah, for that reason, I want to put him Mater. Yeah. Uh, next then is Magus Elite Prote uh, Protector. So once per turn, you may defend another character on your canvas. Cost three, plus one. Uh, I think B. She's cool. Yeah, I would yeah. say B as well. It's very akin to the uh, the dragon that can yeah, protect. Yeah, only, only this one gives you... Uh, oh, not Materno, sorry. lets you resolve. Yeah. So you, the other protection one doesn't. I know what you mean, yeah. Glacius Draco, I think. Yes, yeah. Um, cool, yeah, happy with that one. Yeah. Uh, next one then is uh, Oculus, uh, Occultus Shaman. Yep, the Occultus yeah. Shaman. Uh, so you dig for a character with Akram and a shard value of one. Deploy them immediately for free. This really comes in handy, to be honest. Um, I did it, it with my Prism Sapper. Um, I would put this at B tier, probably. Yeah, I'm thinking B as well. The, I would only put it up to A tier. I was about to put the present up, brother. <laughs> I, would only, I would only put it up to A tier if, again, when you actually look at all the cards in this realm, the only card that has a cost of one that is Akron mm. is Prism Sapper. The only card that actually helps. Actually, you know what? I was tempted to go. No, no. I, I still think that. I still think. Wait, does she give you anything? You know what? D you can say no, and I'll leave you, her in B tier. How dare you? I I'll give you the final vote on this, but let me push it to you this way. 
doesn't give you any resolve for costing three. And you only get value out of her if you've got a Prism Sapper in your dregs or, you know, about to be in your dregs. Otherwise, you know, only two cards in your deck could actually be affected by her. I think that's enough to put down to C. She has been useful. Don't, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not debating. I'm getting looks now. I, I'm not debating the fact that you have used her in your games and had some really fun plays with her. I'm tempted to knock it down to see for that. You son of a bitch. Fine. Thank you. Um, okay. <laughs> she so, looks like me on a hot day, though. <laughs> uh, lastly, is rabid dog. Uh, cost two, steal one, and poisonous. I, I personally think he's uh, S tier. I do as well. Uh, the fact that, you know, the, it's, I think it's the only poisonous uh, character on this uh, realm, which just means that he can essentially kamikaze and take out any character on the board, mm. no matter what location they've got. Uh, a lot of people will avoid attacking him for that reason as well. You know, he's a bit of a deterrent. He won't be attacked because people don't want to lose their cards. Yeah. And as long as you keep him on the board, plus uh, he's a steel one. Yeah, he's an S tier. Get him in there. For sure. For sure. Um, okay, next then. So now we're looking at uncommon locations. So uh, I'm actually going to save that one till last. That's mm -hmm. the promo card. So we've got Curdle Village. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaks for itself, really. It's got a minus two in the resolve and it only costs you three. Um, I would put this in C. Yeah, I think C. It's it's a bit underwhelming. You know, it's it's not it's not the best card. It's not the worst card. It's good at leveling the playing field. Yeah. Um, and just having a location out often really helps with a lot of these cards that we're saying are very, yep. very good. So, All right, let's do a bit of a speed round as well. Love them, okay. City Gates. I, it gives you a plus three, cost four. If you have a guard, you can raise a character. Has to be uh, S tier. S tier. Even, yeah. even by itself without its action. I know it costs it's a four. Plus three. In two turns, it will have more than paid for itself. And yeah. if you do have put a Love them, City Guard, Bang, you can raise a character. That's incredibly powerful. Yeah. Uh, lovely. Next, Wrangled Woods. I also want to put an S tier. For the same reason uh, as yes. we put Ludlum City. Yeah. Costs only three. It costs three. one less. Costs yeah. one less. Two, two t uh, one turn, it's paid, literally, it pays for itself on the turn mm. you play it. Uh, and if you can keep it for more than a few turns, then it's just, yep, yeah, lore. Yeah, definitely. Um, road to Ludlum, uh, cost two, steal one. I'd say uh, A tier. Uh, I would have said B. B, you know what? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine with B tier. The fact that, you know, in two turns, it'll have paid for itself and continue to, you know, steal. If it was a minus one, definitely would be like C tier. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm happy with B tier. I'm, fine I'm with also that. thinking of the fact that it has a yellow shard in there. Uh, yeah, which again, thinking of uh, against uh, Block Out Sun. I can't actually find it on my board, and that's annoying me. Block Out oh, there Sun. It is. Oh, well, uh, well. So we said B tier, right? Yes. Cool. Um, okay, so we're now moving on to uh, the uncommon objects, which is only uh, new on trap. Um, I would personally put this in S tier. The yeah, fact it I costs, well. yeah, it costs literally just one. It's not really being used as a buffer or as a defense it's for the a action. character. It's more just the action that you use it for. Yeah. And honestly, it's it's essentially like you know, just it it, yeah. it is just an action in itself, really. Absolutely. Um, and even even though you could argue, well, it's only it only costs one for someone to attack and get their character back, mm. but they then have to potentially sacrifice that character if the character that you want to try to attach to will kill it. Yeah. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, so we're now moving on to the commons to finish this off then. So starting with common actions, uh, ab ab yeah. Abundance of Quintessence. Personally, I say A tier. It's a once-off action to essentially gain three. Yeah, like, the net gain three. Um, it's not like, oh my gosh, you have to have it. Yeah. But you can, it's The fact brilliant. that you can play it at any time is good. Yeah, it's just a little yeah. buffer, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, because, you know, although you could argue why would that not be S tier, that's just a solid gain. you got to remember, you're building a deck of 30 cards. Mm. You might want to put other cards in it. It's very close to S tier, very close. Yeah. Uh, block out the sun. Uh, for the same reason that we put Akron Surge in A tier, I'm going to put that in A tier. I agree. Fantastic board clear, but not S tier because it does mm. risk your own cards. Yeah. Uh, chromatic Flare. Raise one character or location with any Akron shard from any canvas. Um, I would put that. Man, I'd put that. At, I'd put that at. Oh, it's between A and B for me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's nowhere near S tier. Just to be very clear, because yeah. Fireball is the. Uh, you know, Fireball is any character or location. Oh, yeah, this absolutely. one's just uh, that. Um, I'm thinking B tier because it's very situational well, so against Akron. You only Akron. get one um, Fireball. No, I actually think you get two fireballs. You can get two fireballs. But chromatic flare, I believe, has got multiples as well because it's an un it's a yeah. You, you could have you could have two chromatic flares and two fireballs. But yeah. I think the reason we're putting it in B is because um, uh, it is actually no. I'm, I'm I put I'll put it in. 
Uh, <laughs> I'll put an eight here, because when you compare it to Fireball, the only difference is Fireball... Fireball is exactly the same card, except... Uh, Chromatic Flare just has the thing of it has to be an Akron card. It can't, you know, whereas mm -hmm. Fireball is any. So I think it's only just underneath. I'll put it in A. Yeah. Uh, we've then got uh, Delilah's Concoction. Um, I want to put that in C. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like uh, discount Delilah, basically. If you haven't got Delilah out on your board because she gives protection to another character from yeah. Akron, it's like... A little buffer before you can get her out, essentially. And that's only... So I put that... I put that D, personally. Yeah, you know, I think that might be our first D card. Because yeah. it's only really it's only really useful if um, you know for a fact that... You know, you've got a card that you can play next turn that will buffer your current character on the board and keep them alive longer. But even then, it's almost like delaying the inevitable. Mm. Um, and it's got a terrible trade value. So, yeah, yeah. I would say D. Yeah, I agree. That's my first D. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, this one is next. Hostile Takeover. Uh, cost three. Claim a location. Um, I would say A, to be honest. I agree. Yeah, claiming a location, especially as we've seen how many strong locations there are in this game. Absolutely. Yeah, ate it. Oh, we got a second row for A now. Uh, and the next one is Mystical Malfunction. There is any object of power. Oh, I think that with some of the objects that we have here... God, I, I would put... Oh, I'm torn between A and B. See, I'm torn between B and C. So we meet in the middle of B? Yeah, let's yeah. meet in the middle of B. I'm simply thinking of, like, you know, like, for example, the Muon Trap. You know, yeah, you good to get your object own... of power, you can get your own character yeah. back and things like that. The reason why I was tempted to put it in C is because, mm. you know, there aren't actually that many objects in this uh, in this uh, realm. No, that's um, true. So, you know, that then becomes useless. But anyway, I, I think B tier is fine. Uh, and then lastly, we got Restock. Uh, I personally want to put this in S tier. I agree. Um, you know, card draw in this game is so important. Um, it does rely on getting it early on in the game. You don't want it to, to the end. But yeah, mm. personally, that's invaluable to me. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we move on to the uh, common characters. So the first one we've got here is uh, Craze Curdle Resident. Uh, personally, I want to put him in C tier. Cost one, you get an instant minus one, but then he's then useless apart from... Oh, I was wrong. Oh, I gave I gave poor Oculus Shaman the wrong the wrong Occultist. end of the stick. Occultus Shaman. I, do you remember Occultus Shaman? I said, oh, she's useless yeah. because she's only got uh, one Prism card. Snapper. Do you want me to move her back to B on the basis yes, that there is please. two cards? There we go. Yes. We're moving her back to B because there is technically I made a mistake. There Justice. is one other. There is one other character. <laughs> but I'm gonna put him in C though, as a thing because he's. Um, I think that he should be D. D. Yeah, because you just get. Uh, but you I get, only get it once. You only and get it once for one shard. Pointless. And Whereas at least with the Prism Sapper, you get that every turn. Yeah, and he's only he's only going to be starting to get anywhere good if you bring him out with a Culture Shaman. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with Dita. Uh, Lone Survivor. Um, I'm going to put her in. You know what? I'd put her in A tier actually. Okay. Here's the reason. Well, I don't know. Maybe you can, <laughs> maybe you can convince me to go B tier. But the reason why is that even though she only costs one to draw a card. Yeah. Actually, again, card draw is really important in this game. If you know, considering that we're putting restock, which costs two to draw two in S tier, yeah. this is costing one to draw one, and you're getting a character on the board, which could be a plus three gain if you've got Cronus out, or plus one if you've got Detective Huxton out. Well, actually, no, sorry, yeah. not that one because she's not a Magnus. Is she Magnus? She Magnus Lee? Uh, she is. Yeah. Uh, no, she's a witch, so actually she wouldn't work oh, for Cronus. Oh, right, sorry, she, no, I thought you were talking about Cronus. But she would work for, you know, Ruthro or Huxton. Yeah. Um, I want to put her in A tier for that reason. Card yeah, draw right. is card draw with a character. <laughs> um, sorry, I didn't mean to yawn. That's right. Love them city guards. Uh, he's I would, a wizard. I would say B tier. Um, you know, he gains himself back on the same turn. If you can keep him up for a couple of turns, he's going to gain. And the fact you get a free block if... Um, if you double MC, again. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. Yeah. Uh, what is next? We have got Magnus Elite Agent. Uh, personally, C tier. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the block costing, is fairly good. But, but to cost I mean, two to do it. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. He's really only useful. Um, he's really only useful if you are... Actually, you know what? I'm tempted to put detail, you know? Because, again, he or by himself, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's only really useful if you have, you know, he's basically there to be fodder for your Detective Cronus, Huxton, or Ruthro, or Kara Kirtle. 
Yeah, that's yeah. that's true. That's Otherwise, true. he's, he's pretty, also your yeah. first profile picture on the Acroma app as well. <laughs> yes. But you know, so for that reason, he goes down to D. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, who else we got next? So next we've got the Magnus Elite Detective. Uh, this one I'm going to put straight up to A because yeah. he's like, he's like again, he's like a, where Huxton is a discount Rothro uh, or Cronus. He's like a, uh, he's a, a discount, discount Huxton. For each other Magnus Elite character. Uh, he's yeah, a it's only Magnus Elite. Oh, you know what? In which case I want to go B tier actually. I forget it's only Magnus Elite. Oh, all right, fine. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. If, it was every, if it was every other character, any character, I put him A. B for that reason. Man, Sheriff's gonna be so mad when he sees us. <laughs> um, so where are we next? Uh, Magnus Elite Inspector. This one I'd oh, put yes. an A tier. Yes, definitely. Although it is still Magnus Elite characters, the fact that you can literally go and find one um, is. She yeah. costs two, and you can go card. and find a card of one, two, or three. You could potentially find Huxon. Yes, well, that that's pretty much exactly why you play yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bada so, bing, bada boom. Well, uh, I guess you could say beta because she has to rely. I mean, she, she doesn't know, have a result, but cards. no, she doesn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy beta. Yeah. Uh, occultist warlock. Um, I think he's he's C tier. Yeah. He's, he's he's not you know he's not amazing. He's not bad. He's kind of right in the middle, isn't he? He's just yeah. Too he costs steel. two, but he does he does steal. If it was yeah. just a minus one, I'd be like. Eh. But he has to survive two turns to get his value back. Yeah. Um, but because you're draining as well as yeah, draining, yeah. I would say it moves up to C. Uh, and then lastly, we've got Prism Sapper, who uh, I would probably again put C tier because yeah. she she's kind of like a better version of Cursed Resident, where the Crazed Resident. Because like yeah. with Crazed Resident, although you could argue, oh yeah, Crazed Resident, you know that uh, at least Crazed gives it, you know, he does it straight away. Well, it doesn't really matter if the action really is straight away it's because the next Prism Sapper, is, yeah, Prism, yeah, exactly. The next step is resolve anyway, so yeah, I'd put her in C yeah. tier. Um, okay, so we then come on to the locations. We are almost done. We've just gone over an hour, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, great tattoos. Blueberry Grove, <gasps> one for one. S tier, S tier. <laughs> S tier, just because of the... Uh, no. I, I think, um, I think uh, A tier, actually. It's a really easy one to get out. It's a, literally a free card. One. It's a free card that turn. Yeah, not many people are really going to be trying to target that either because it's yeah, only a plus one. And they're going to be saving their control cards for the better locations out there. Exactly. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, right, Curdle Cave, uh, I think B tier, cost two, doesn't, because I've had this in my hand a few times, if your opponent is controlling your canvas and you can't get characters out, that's going to be useless, yeah. but if you can get the characters out, aka, you know, why we're doing B tier is relying on other cards, mm. becomes very strong. Uh, next one is uh, Curdle Glade. Pretty, uh, Viscous has a block one, uh, it costs two. Um, I'm trying to remember where we put the other blocks. I, I mean, just looking at it, I'm thinking like C or D. Yeah, yeah. We put the other block. We put Hex Clunker in here for. Yeah, I'm thinking. Again, blocks are good, but they're kind of like take it or leave it. Again, very dependent on what mm. deck you're playing against. So I think C tier is fine. Yeah. Uh, next we've got Curdle. What have we done that one? Uh, Curdle Lane. <gasps> I love uh, it. It's so pretty. One for one. If we're putting Blueberry Grove in A, which is a one one for plus one, I think yeah. Curdle Lane goes in A tier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you're doing a minus tracks, build, yeah. yeah. Um, then we've got Curdle Mine. Steal one for two shards. For that um, reason, I want to move, if we, I want to lock it down to B. Yeah, I mean, what, what was the other location that we were literally oh, just talking about? Oh, Road to Ludlum. Just, Road to Ludlum is exactly the same, they're exactly the same card. Curdle, Curdle Mine is... Road to Ludlum is yellow and black shards. Yes, which obviously it gives you the, um, because where, where is Road to Ludlum, uh, location? Uh, Road in... to Ludlum, there you go. So Road to Ludlum is the same thing. It costs two to steal yeah. one. So nice and easy then. We put it yeah. in the same place. Beta. Sounds good. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then uh, Curdle Woods. Uh, cost three to oh, restrain yeah. a character. I'm going to say B. Five. I'm reluctant to put it in A because it's costing three. And because it's being restrained, <sighs> is only a restraint. you're not getting any value out of it apart from... It's yeah. true. But it still has it. No, I'll I'll agree with B. Yeah. Yeah, I'll agree with B because it still has its place. Silent thickets. Oh, so cool. Is now keep in mind for those that haven't uh, seen it, it. That looks different, but technically, Curdle Woods and Silent Thicket are basically the same card because where it says claim a character and restrain them, it, it's the same thing. It basically should just say restrain. So for the same reason, nice and easy, beta. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, and then lastly, we come on to the uh, common objects. We've got Magnus Elite Staff, which is a, a one block. That I put an A tier. You know, we 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 put locations that are one for gain one, one for minus one, one for a block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, we've we we put block cards it lower. It does it does depend 
depend on you having a character out though. Yeah, but this, whereas this with is a location very... you can just plop out. Compared to Siege of Draco Temple, this realm has a lot of characters. It's a very character-driven... Um... True. Oh, well, I mean, Siege of Draco yeah. Temple has got plenty of characters. It's just if you're playing on the Drake side, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so then lastly, uh, a cultist to tame. I like it because it's a knife. Yeah, and again, it's one... <laughs> look, going with the same pattern we have recently. Yeah. Cost one to do minus one. Mm -hmm. A tier for me. Yep. And by the way, with the inclusion of this next card that we're about to do, that does actually make the deck 61 cards. Yes, not that is 60. true. You so the last one is the, the promo start. card. And unfortunately, I don't have a way of bringing this big on screen. Um, not quickly anyway. So this is the Curse of Curdle Hill promo card. I can read it out even though you guys can't see it. It, is, it costs four um, and it is a steal two. So on the basis that it, uh, you know, stealing is good. Uh, and that it will pay itself back in two turns. It doesn't have any yellow in, so it's not going to be easy to remove. I want to put it in A tier, personally. Yeah, I yeah. and, you know, it, it's a promo card. It's very cool. I like it. So, there we go. There is uh, mine and Wayward's opinion on all of the cards in the first realm of Akron, which is the Curse of Curdle Hill. Now, I'm... I'm actually slightly surprised that we didn't put any in F. I'll be honest, already thinking of the next video where we talk about Cedar Draco Temple, I know a couple that I'm going to put in F. But, you know, for Curdle Hill, I'm actually quite glad that we don't think there's a single card in this realm that is absolute trash and, you know, you never pick this. Obviously, we have got a couple of cards at the bottom there that are kind of like, eh, not really useful. Everything has their place. Everything has uh, but, a place. You know, that's, yeah. that's the whole it's reason why these... Exactly. The whole reason why these cards were created was because they have a place. Yeah. We're just theorizing on popular decks and metas and things like that that people are probably going to be looking at and in our own experiences as well of what has been useful to us. Yeah. Well, and uh, so hopefully this has been useful for you. If you're looking to deck build in uh, this realm, you know, this will give you a good idea of what cards you should be definitely looking to get in your deck, which cards you should be potentially looking to avoid or maybe, you know, put in to trade away. Um, I would love to hear your opinions in the comments. Like I said, there'll be a link in the description if you want to do your own version. I'd love to see screenshots of it in the Acroma Discord to see your opinions. But in the meantime, folks, thank you very much for watching. There will be a part two, which will be Cedar Draco Temple. And when the new uh, one comes out, Fall of Flutterby, we'll be doing it for that one as well. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate uh, Karen Moy with none joining me today. Hope you guys have fun and see you in the next one. As always, remain wholesome. Thanks, guys. Bye.